cloud. Yeah, so um, again, so, so sorry about that. That was my bad. I'm over here like, Rachel, do you need me to open it for you? And it's supposed to be my data host. Um, so oh, I totally went into Zoom time. I don't know who was hosting. So I was like, well, whoever's hosting, I hopefully I just reminded them. Then well, I was like, crap, is it me? I guess I'll grab my computer. <laughs> What's so funny about it is that I opened the Trello board like an hour ago and I saw the July schedule and I was like, no, it's August. So I went because they hadn't put the August one in yet. And I was like, oh, somebody needs to do that. So I went into the Thrive Army to look at the August one and I saw it was you. And I was like, yes, it's mindset. I love that Zoom. No, Demi, it's still July. You, can I blame the fact that I have 10 kids? Is that allowed? Is that acceptable? That's okay. totally allowed. Yes. All right. I'm, I'm yeah, I'll be quiet. No, no, no. You are totally fine. Okay. So, um, some of you guys, this is going to be old news. Some of you guys are like, wow, I've never heard this before ever because it gets talked about on some zoom sometimes. And then, um, it's not something that we talk about every single day. So today we're going to be going over branding and content creation. Those two go hand in hand and it's my forte. It's like what I find the most joy in. Um, if you have not yet signed up for the masterclass that Mikkel, Courtney, Gabby, and myself did two weeks ago, you need to sign up for that. The link is all over the place. Um, the link is in Courtney's Instagram, my Instagram, Gabby's Instagram, whatever. And it comes with a bunch of freebies, including um, something that I created for branding. So what we do for branding is, is our fives list, right? You're going to write down five things that you love about your product. If being a promoter was not an option, what is going to get you up every single day taking your Thrive? Those five things are going to be your main focus when you're talking about the product. And the reason behind that is whenever it's something that you feel passionate about, when it's something that brings you joy, you're going to be able to talk about it more freely. You're going to be able to really get into your posts and make them be something that other people are like, man, she really likes that energy. So, you know, I want to try the energy stuff too, right? So you want to write down the five things that you love about your product. For me, it's the energy. I need the energy, 10 kids. That's a big, big deal for me. I need to be able to do that. Second thing for me is the gut health. I have a lot of gut issues to begin with. So having the gut health aspect of the system, that's huge for me. That's something that I like to talk a lot about. Um, the next thing for me is the fact that it is customizable. I love that this could really work for any person, no matter what their need might be or what their lifestyle looks like, what shift they work each day, whether it's morning, nights, swings, whatever, this is customizable to fit everybody's needs. Um, so that's just three examples of my top five, write down your top five things that you love about the product. The next thing that you want to do is write down your top five things that you love about the business. What made you say you wanted to be a promoter? You could have just been a customer. You could have just stayed a customer and thrived for free and not had to worry about anything, right? But you wanted to be a promoter. Why? What are your top things? Again, when you are making posts that are talking about the opportunity, you're going to be able to pull from those five things. Those are the things that are going to bring you the most joy. Those are the things that are going to be easiest for you to talk about. For me, number one is the community. I love the community. I love that we can get on Zooms together like this. I love that we have our team chats. So the community is a big deal for me. Um, number two is gonna be the weekly paycheck. That's huge, not getting paid bi-weekly or even just once a month, but getting paid every single week is so helpful for my family. Um, the trips, I've never gone anywhere in my life until Lavelle. And I mean, I haven't gone anywhere besides Jamaica since then because of COVID, but you know, whatever, it's fine, we're getting there. Um, the trips are huge. The opportunity to go and see the world and travel to places that I've never been before, That means more to me than I could ever like put in a post, right? Um, so write down your top five things that you love about the business. Now the next one, this is going to be the harder one. This is where you write the five things about you. This is going to be where your entire business is built on these five things. The number one thing that I want to tell you about these five things is that they do not have to stay the same forever. They're fluid. As your life changes, your fives list is going to change. Just perfect example that we were talking about actually right now. At this present moment, Florencia is not a student, right? She is not going to school. She's a stay-at-home mom. She loves planners. She is 
there's other parts of her fives list. I'm not sure if she wants me to share. So she's got things on her fives list, right? That are there right now. But in a couple of months, whenever she starts school, that could be a huge thing on her fives list that she's a student, that she's going to school online, that she's studying science, right? Like those things give her what her content is going to be, right? She has a ton of things that she can post about. Reevaluate your personal brand fives every three ish months. Absolutely. 10,000%. Um, last year I was homeschooling this year. I'm not last year. Whenever I was homeschooling, that was like 90% of my content was homeschooling. Does it suck that I don't have that anymore because it was a huge portion of my content? Yeah, but I've replaced it with other parts of my brand, right? Like my chickens have kind of stepped up and taken over a big chunk of my brand because that's something that I want to pursue more in the future as like a business avenue, right? Um, so your, your fives list is going to be fluid. Don't worry about it. Just focus on what you have right now. So a good little, I guess, trick to find those five things, two things that are your reality, things that you are doing every single day. So for myself, as an example, I am a mom of many, right? I am, I have 10 kids. I'm constantly dealing with that blended family, mom of many, whatever, however you want to word it. It's very specific. It's not just, I'm a mom or I'm a boy mom. It's specific. I can post about large family things. That is not going to be something that every single person can post about. It's going to be something that only large family moms can post about. They get it. They understand. They have a large family. They get how that works, right? Uh, so you want to be pretty specific with that. The second thing that is my reality is that I am a business owner, right? That's a big part of my content. I am constantly training people on this right here, branding and content creation. So that's part of my reality. That's a lot of my content now, especially on Instagram. The next thing after your two things that are your reality, you want to do something that you can talk about easily. For me, that's my faith. I can quote scripture. I can talk about what God's doing in my life. I can talk about going to church. I can show content of me reading the Bible with my kids, doing Bible study, all of those things. Talking about my faith is something that I can talk about easily. So that's number three. Another one for your, sorry, I'm letting people in the waiting room. Um, another one for your fives list is going to be a hobby, something that you like to do, right? And even if it's not now, Remember, keep this in mind. It doesn't have to be something that you have a ton of time to do, right? So like you're a mom, you have a bunch of kids running around. You might not necessarily have a ton of time to read, but if reading is your hobby, if that's what you like to do, you can absolutely post content about that. And this is going to get you doing your hobby more, finding more time in your day to fit that in, right? So for me, my hobby is going to be Harry Potter, planners, organization, right? It all loops in. My story content is filled with that stuff all of the time. And I have done a really good job of branding myself because now I have people every single day sending me Harry Potter stuff. I get tagged in Harry Potter stuff. I get sent Harry Potter stuff. Um, I get tagged in planners. I get sent planners. I get tagged in chicken stuff all the time because everybody knows this is who I am. This is what I do, right? So two things that are your reality. One thing that you can talk about easily. One thing that is your hobby. And then the last one is going to be something that you are really good at. So right now, my something that I'm really good at is my chickens. That is what I'm posting a lot about. I know a lot about chickens. I know a lot about raising them, coop cleanup, um, different things that you need to, my skirts too. My skirts is another big thing that's part of like my faith or part of my hobby, whatever. So you don't have to just have five, right? Like you can have more than five, but you want to have at least those five and you want to have your content surrounding those things right so you'll notice whenever i make a post i very 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 rarely probably one percent of the time make a post that's like thrive is amazing you should buy thrive right like that's that's not what my posts say at all my post will be a picture of me in my skirts wearing a harry potter shirt in my chicken coop right all three of those things boom 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 right there. And my caption will be talking about what we are doing as a large family that day. And then in my caption, when I'm talking about all of the things that my large family is going to be doing and how we manage it, I'm going to mention the fact that I have mood support or I have lasting clean energy all day long, right? I just checked so many boxes in one post. Does that make sense? 
You don't, it doesn't have to just be a post about how you love Harry Potter. It doesn't have to just be a post about how you love your chickens, right? You can make it be full circle and include all of the things. Um, so the biggest thing that I can suggest for you guys to do, uh, I know not everybody is a paper planner. So whether it is a Trello board or you're just using like your notes on your phone, or if you are somebody that likes to sit down with a paper planner, write those things down, keep them in the front of your planner, your notebook, whatever. And then once a week, sit down and write down how many posts that week that you want to do. I personally do three posts a day. Every single day without fail, I do three posts a day. If you only do one post a day, that's fine. If you're doing two posts a day, that's fine. If you're doing seven posts a day, that's fine. Write down how many posts a day you do. And then I want you to look at your 15 things that you have listed out, right? You now have 15 different things that you can post about. We also like to look at like what holidays are happening that week whether it's Christmas, Thanksgiving, Memorial Day, one of your kids' birthdays, first day of school, last day of school, whatever it is that is going on in the world and in your personal life, take a look at that and plug those in to the days, right? I literally sit down with like a notebook and I write the date for every day of the week. I write one, two, three, so that I can list out my three posts for every day of the week. So I know on Tuesday, it's the kid's first day of school. It's not really, it's actually on Monday next week, whatever. I'm just picking random things and events and days and whatever, bear with me, you know what I'm doing. Tuesday is the kid's first day of school. Obviously my content is gonna be about their first day of school. So how can I make that fit into my brand besides just, oh, hey, it's the first day of school. I could do a live about getting 10 kids ready for school. I could do a reel about getting 10 kids ready for school. I could do a post about what it takes in the morning to get those 10 kids ready for school. How we manage bringing, literally, y'all should see us bringing all of their school supplies up to the school on that first day. Whenever you ask for 27 reams of copy paper, it gets kind of comical because I got so many kids. Literally, like we take two wagons with us and we're pulling wagons through the school full of reams of copy paper. That is good content. That is showing other large families how we do first day of school. That is entertaining to people who don't have large families. It is going to get people commenting and liking my post, right? So that would be a really good on-brand post for me. If it is Sunday, I know that I'm gonna be posting about going to church or filling out my planner, doing Bible study, whatever it is that I'm doing that Sunday. And I, part of my brand, I always do on Sundays we do, and then I list out whatever it is that we're doing, right? So I might do on Sundays, we make it to church on time with no fit throwing. And I do a picture of the kids dressed all cute. Everybody's smiling, nobody's crying. Everybody has their shoes on. There isn't like a random stain on somebody's clothes. You know what I mean? Like we had all of our ish together that day and I'm gonna make a post about it. And I'm gonna say on Sundays we do, because that's something that I do. That's part of my brand. I also do the ampersand sign. I always do two of those. I never do one of them. Why? I don't know. I just like it. And that's something that I do in all of my posts. So now it's part of my brand. So as you're scrolling through Facebook and you see somebody that said, we went to Target ampersand ampersand Walmart, you're going to be like, oh, Tracy went to Target and Walmart without even seeing that it's from me, right? Because you know, I do those two every single time. Your brand also is going to include your color scheme, the specific fonts that you use in your stories over and over and over and over and over, the types of music that you overlay on top of your content and your stories. All of those things tie into your brand and it makes it easier for people to like you, to know you and trust you, which is the end goal of this, right? So once you have your fives list for all three of those and you have worked on your content creation for that week, you can look at that list of posts that you have and you can see what the majority of your posts are going to be about. And mine alternate. So one week, a ton of my posts are going to be about chicken raising. The next week, a ton of my posts are going to be about large family stuff. Like right now, back to school, that's huge for, for families, for kids and all of those things. So I'm not going to be adding a ton of chicken moms right now, right? I'm not going to be adding a bunch of farms I'm not going to be adding a bunch of backyard chicken people because they're not posting or interacting with things that are about kids going back to school. But moms or large family moms are posting about their kids going back to school. They're doing back to school shopping. They're doing 
clothes shopping. They are organizing all the supplies and backpacks. They are getting their kids ready for their first day of school. So I wanna make sure that I am adding people on both Instagram and Facebook that will find value in what I'm posting that week. So that list on Sundays that I do every single week, that tells me what groups I'm gonna be focusing on the following week. That tells me what hashtags I'm going to be using in my posts the following week. And it tells me what hashtags I'm going to be searching on Instagram to find people to add. So literally knowing your brand and being able to plan out your content, however that might look for you, even if you only plan one post a day and you end up posting three a day, whatever, whatever little bit of a plan you can have in place is going to make your life so much easier the next week, because you're going to know who you're adding. You're going to know why you're adding them. And you're going to have just like a game plan set for your, your week. It's going to make everything so much easier on the weeks that we have like tournaments and I don't get a chance to sit down and do my Sunday content planning, I literally want to die the next week because I have no idea what to post. I am not, I'm not Gabby Marshall running around with like a bajillion creative ideas every five seconds, right? Like I can't just make a reel at the top of my head. I have to plan that stuff out. I'm a planner. I need that, that time. So if you're like that, you need to make sure that you're setting aside a day a week to plan out your content like that. Does anybody have any questions yet? Feel free to unmute, put it in the chat, whatever you're more comfortable with. I can go back over anything, whatever you might need. So another thing that we do, oh, go ahead. Somebody unmute. It. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was, that, that's me, Trace. Uh, I kind of look a wreck right now because of work, so I'm not even showing my face. <laughs> So listen, um, with the branding, that's what I've really been like focusing on like the last uh, two months, uh, uh, whatever the case may be, because you can see on my Instagram page, if you ever go there, I've kind of gotten rid of a lot of the old stuff uh, that I had on there, <clears throat> particularly stuff that might be offensive to people, because I know one thing that I've always learned when I, when I grew up was if you want to talk and get into a fight real quick talk about religion or politics. I had a lot of that stuff on my, uh, uh, especially politics, a lot of this stuff on my uh, Instagram. So what I did was I went through and I just highlighted the things that were, I liked uh, about myself, about my family, about what's going to be my brand. Now that doesn't mean that I'm going to uh, completely get rid of the religion and politics because that is a part of my life and that is a part of who I am. <clears throat> but I make it more, I've made my Instagram more aesthetic to the eye. So when you see certain colors or you see uh, a barbecue pit going or you, you, you know, you see me um, outside in my yard because I do that a lot, you know that is particularly uh, me. So um, <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is that making your um, page more aesthetic to the eye like you just like you just implied uh makes people realize that that's you and so when they're interested in what you're doing they're automatically going to stop and take a gander at what you're doing absolutely ten thousand percent um instagram is very vain like that everything kind of needs to be pretty now you don't have to be a professional photographer and you don't have to have like the most fancy house in the world to be able to get like a good following on there or to get some customers on there or to build some good genuine relationships on there but you do need to put a little bit of effort into your pictures and you need to make it aesthetically pleasing um, whereas facebook is very much more personal i feel like um so that they both have their pluses and their minuses i personally right now am am loving the growth that I'm having on Instagram and I'm loving the relationships that I'm building on Instagram. I am reaching far more people on Instagram than I could ever reach on Facebook. Facebook is more for people that I have known forever or people that I am building a very personal relationship with surrounding their circumstances or things like that. Like people that I'm adding from the blended families group, I'm building really good relationships with them based off of the struggles that they're going through with sharing their kids because I share those same struggles, right? But it's not necessarily going to thrive right away. It's not going to like, here's how I can help you. This is what I can add value in your life. It's more like I'm a shoulder for you to lean on, if that makes sense. But then on Instagram, because I'm able to make everything very aesthetically pleasing, and because Instagram is as vain as it is, I'm able to get people 
who are like, I need help with chore charts. And they're coming to watch my IGTV on chore charts, right? That's what they're, that's what they're there for. And then they're sticking around because they see that I can offer value in that area. I can help them with managing a large family or managing their three kids even, because if I can manage 10, then I can help them manage three, right? So it's, it, they're two very different ball games, um, but it's very important on both of them that you know who you are and what it is that you're gonna be posting. And you can post very different things on both of those. Like if you want Instagram to be more of the business side, like what you can offer value wise in your business, you could 10,000% do that. And then have Facebook be more of like your personal brand and what it is that you do every single day in your day-to-day -day life that is not around the business. Like doing your chickens or whatever. I, I'll, I just use myself as an example because I don't know what everybody's doing. I'm sorry. I can barely remember my kids' names. So yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, it's more of like your opinion. I am doing um, my daily Bible verses and I have grown a few followers, but let's be real, like Bible verses aren't really trending on Instagram. Um, I definitely narrowed down my brand, like my niche a little bit, but I don't really put out a ton of, so I like to cater to autism moms, but I don't like to put out a lot of autism content, if that makes sense. So I don't know if I should change some of my content or like the way I'm, I don't know. What is it that, that you are trying to, yeah, the, the Bible verses, by the way, that's spot on. And if you're not having the growth that you want from your Bible verses, definitely do some hashtag research. Um, go and see some of the bigger people that are sharing Bible content, see what hashtags they're using and start using. That's a good idea. Yeah, I've been just throwing up random hashtags and I yeah. know I need to do hashtag research, but I haven't. Do some research on that. Just spend like 30 minutes tonight doing some research and just save them in your notes. That's as soon idea. as you see one, just save it in your notes. And then that way you have like this whole, like these are for my Bible posts, right? And you could just copy it and paste it. And you're good to I go. love that. And should uh, I be posting the same hashtags? Like uh, if it's, if it's that same kind of content, yeah. Yeah. So like if I'm, if I'm posting stuff about chickens, I'm not going to be posting, um, like hashtags about back to school, right. Because I'm posting about the chicken. Right. So all of my hashtags for those posts are going to be very much the same. I just, and I have them in my notes. I have chicken posts. I have kid posts. I have my baseline. Like I always do large family logistics and mom of many. Like I use those on every single post, no matter what, because that affects everything else in my life. Right. So for you, um, if you're wanting to do more with the autism mom thing, I would, I would pick one or two autism hashtags and have that be on, on your thing, because that's who you are. That's a very big part of your life that affects how you do Bible study that affects how you organize your, your life that's true. that affects all those other things. And yeah, it's the biggest part of my life. It's just in right. the autism community, people like to hide, but I want to be a resource, but I don't want to overshare. So there's like a careful constructed, you know, like balance there. Plus not all the same recommendations. Every kid is so unique. So, um, so Maybe you yeah. can focus some content on around like your specific situation and, and your son and how it is that this helps him the most. And you know what I mean? Like you have a very specific situation, but that doesn't mean nobody else has the same situation. So like, if you were going to do an IGTV live, you could preface it with like every, every, you know, autism is such a huge, that's why it's a spectrum. Like it's such a yeah. huge, huge, like 90% of people have no idea that Ryan even has it. You know what I mean? Like it's, whereas your kids, it's like way more prevalent. It affects y'all yeah. day to day far more. So maybe just preface everything that you do with like, there's a wide range of, you know, autism disorders out there, but this is what helps us with this specific thing. I wish so badly that I would have seen some of your content when Ryan was younger, whenever everything was far more difficult with him before he was verbal and all of those things, like those, the high chairs, the strollers, all of that stuff would have come in handy so much. So there's people out there that need to see the content that you have. Yeah, there really is. I really should be sharing more of that, maybe making more videos on the, cause I, I have several people that actually went and got the equipment and are going to get it. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I think I should maybe I'm I'm struggling because my Instagram is now Bible verses, which is awesome. But now I feel like this intense pressure because of what I've been putting out, like now it's gotta look holier than thou. And that's just not that's not I'm I'm I love God and I'm all about God, but I don't want people to come to my page and think they're gonna find perfection. They're not, and nobody's perfect. I think I just want to like, you know what I mean? But I, I'm struggling with trying to figure out exactly get, how I want to word and get rid of that imposter syndrome. Okay. You're, you're yeah. allowed to follow <laughs> Jesus and quote Bible scriptures and oh, yeah. bring, you're allowed to do that and still <laughs> fail somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, no, yeah. get rid of that. that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I will. I appreciate your, your insight. I'm going to be quiet now. Caitlin and Mandy, I believe, both have something they want to say. So duke it out, ladies. Decide who goes first. Um, so I was just going to add a thing to what Rachel was saying about, like, obviously working on hashtags to get more views. Um, but something I started doing is going to, like, bigger pages. So I follow a few people that do, like, Bible journaling, for example, that have hundreds of thousands of followers. And I'll go comment on their posts, but I'm looking at who else is commenting, kind of like what we do in groups. But since Instagram doesn't have groups, I just go to pages that have hundreds of thousands of followers and start interacting with people in the comments and then adding people that are commenting on things that relate with my brand as well. Yeah, I love that. Love that, love that, love that. And I also like I to share that. their stuff like the bigger, the bigger pages. I like to share their stuff in my story and tag them, but don't just like share their posts. Like if they, if they did like a meme or something, I wouldn't just share their post. I would put it over a picture of myself or a picture of the kids or whatever and make it be eye catching so that whenever they reshare it, whoever's watching their story is like, whoa, this lady has 10 kids. What? I want to go follow her. That way, you know, I'm drawing them back to me as well. Caitlin, did you still have a question? Yeah, not a question. Um, but for whenever you're looking at your hashtags, um, don't forget Instagram changed it. You don't have to come up with 30 now. So that's exciting. Um, but whenever you're looking at them, I, this is weird that I can only see myself and Tracy. Let me swipe. Okay. Um, now it's pictures. Okay. <laughs> um, look for the hashtags, like the really big hashtags, the ones that are like, over you know a million posts to them or whatever you want big popular ones you want like middle average ones that are like you know ten hundred thousand posts on them and then you also want smaller ones that are like super niche down into whatever your brand is um so like one of mine is scrunchy mom that one's not really popular because i i call myself scrunchy i'm kind of crunchy but not really um so that one's not popular. So other moms searching scrunchy mom are going to see those because um, that's not going to be a lot of people. So look for a variety of hashtags whenever you're looking at them. Um, and I have something else, but I don't remember what it was. I'll raise my hand again if I remember. Hey, and you know what? I was uh, that's that's interesting that you brought that uh, that up uh, because I was just actually thinking about that and I was going to comment in that manner. I follow a lady named Virginia Kerr. She used to be a uh, uh, a television personality and she gives like really good advice on reels. She's kind of a uh, expert video videographer or whatever you want to call them. But she actually mentioned that with the hashtags talking about the millions uh, hashtag that you or the most common hashtags that that come up that are in the millions and stuff like that. Uh, it is it, it is like really weird to say but you might not get the views uh, of the million hashtags because it is like so common and, and so popular. So you might not get seen on there when you use the smaller hashtags. Now she's found in her own data and research and I'm doing the same thing with the smaller, less common hashtags to get more people to see those hashtags. Uh, I haven't proven that data, she has, but she's found that the, the common uh, hashtag mark is between 20K and like uh, 60K, which would get you like more people seeing uh, uh, your stuff or running across your stuff. She said when you get into the higher um, 
uh, half a million or a million, two million hashtags, you might not get the uh, view uh, from people that you might think you get because of the common use of that particular hashtag. Okay, that's the end of that. I want to just kind of insert something else uh, real quick. It is really, really funny. And Tracy, I know that you remember when I started doing your work with me zones, I said I hated Instagram, absolutely hated Instagram. But like over the last four to five months, right, I have really started to like Instagram a little bit better because Instagram was a scary universe that I wasn't really familiar with. So I tried my, my bit with TikTok and Facebook to me, the audience in on my page is like busted because most of them know me. You know what I mean from uh, if I'm a friend or family or a coworker or something like that. Uh, very few people, a very small percentage, I would say like one to two percent of the people who visit my page actually don't know me on a very personal level. When I cross over to Instagram, because like we talked about how vain and aesthetic that they have to be and you have to show stuff over and over and over again to them, but them to actually like or see who you are because of that universe over there it is actually easier for me to navigate amongst people because they don't have any past history with me and preconceived notions of who they I might be. They just show uh, know what I show them. You know what I'm saying? And the point proven is, is that I didn't get a whole lot of reaction. Everybody knows that I'm a barbecue self-proclaimed pit master. Okay. So I um, actually hooked up with like at least 10 that I know like, to me, because they do it all the time, real pit masters, they got real businesses and they're high profile pit masters. And they actually like comment, you know, and interact with the reels that I do or have started doing, you know what I'm saying? And I thought that was like, absolutely amazing. Like there, there is, there's one uh, uh, lady in, in particular uh, that owns her own brand and product and, and, pit restaurant and she is always on my page talking to me you know what I'm saying and saying oh man that's a good job I should uh, I'm going to try that and I'm like what the you know what I'm saying so yeah. it's actually become a better platform for me to actually uh, uh, showcase uh, who I am who uh, I, I am presently and who I want to be like in the future and offer some value to some people who may just step in, you know, uh, behind those particular people that I get on, on, on uh, Instagram and say, okay, I think I like him. I want to follow him for a little while and see what he buy, he's about. But TikTok, let me tell you, are a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> That's just my, that is just my opinion. If you want to be entertained, and me and my wife were talking about this on the way home. Man, if you want to be entertained, that is the place to go, right? If you want to encounter a bunch of weirdos, like, I don't know, willingly, <laughs> that is the place, that is the place to be, right? Because I, I cannot stand, I, I, I still do TikTok and I put it out there. You know what I mean? But it's just for maybe in hopes that somebody will catch, you know, what he what I'm doing and what I'm saying and say, hey, what's thrive? But like to stay on TikTok and, and, and Insta, uh, you know, uh, TikTok and, and interact with, with them uh, weird people. Maybe I just can't do it. It take too much out of me. It take too much out of me. Lord have mercy. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm so proud of you for digging more into Instagram and guys for real, we do the work with me meeting. I know a lot of you guys get on the work with me meeting to begin with, but we do the work with me meeting six days a week at 9am central standard time. That time might maybe need to change whenever school starts. I, I don't 100% know for sure. Um, it might have to go up an hour, but we do it at 9am central every single day on my zoom number. If you are not getting on that, um, it could be really, really helpful because we go over literally every single thing that pertains to like the day to day of working this business. Parasite, do you? Oh, I saw those. I am disturbed. I'm absolutely disturbed. Like I'm intrigued and I want to try it, but at the same yeah. time, I'm terrified. Like, oh no, I, I did my own research. And apparently, people do this all over the world and it's a regular thing. So now I just, yeah, like it's a total thing people do all over. Like in other cultures, they're like, yeah, you don't see worm. And I'm like, what? 
Um, but yeah, TikTok made me do it. I went down a wormhole on TikTok, super grossed out, super interested. One of those like you can't like not find out now. Yeah. But I couldn't sleep, so I ordered it, and now I need to know. I mean, I take a bunch of balance and biotics, so I'm thinking there's nothing in there. But if there is, I'm going to be shook. <laughs> I'm going to be shook with you. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Everybody's going to run to, to uh, Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Lavelle needs to come out with a, a dewormer, apparently. Okay, All right. Have your hand up. Do you have something else? Yes. TikTok is definitely a funnel. That's the first thing I do whenever I find people on TikTok that I like their content. The first thing I do is follow them on Instagram. First thing. So if you are somebody that can come up with funny videos and stuff like that, and, and you could have one go viral, it's great for your business. So I was going to say, um, since we're talking a lot about Instagram right now, I did not work Instagram like at all besides posting my steps in my story like did that religiously because I did on Facebook too so it didn't matter that I you know took another step um but the best thing that happened in my Instagram was Mandy doing the real challenge um I've had before the real challenge I never made a reel before the real challenge well okay I made one the day before we started it to practice but like the, it, it was part of the real challenge um but before my insights, I only had, I had less than 400 people viewing my stuff. Like it was like 380 something. Uh, I just checked my insights and it's up to over 60,000 people have seen my stuff. So if you're not doing reels, do reels. <laughs> like this, or moral to that story, oh, less than 400 to over 60,000 people have seen my stuff now. Like yeah, do reels. And do I it. went. I went from whenever we started the reels challenge at the beginning of July, I had 1800 followers on there and I was at 2200, I believe. Hang on. Let me double check. So I'm not lying to you. Uh, I am at 2,174 followers. So I have definitely jumped up, um, quite a bit, which is awesome because normally the only way that I get people to follow me on Instagram is by like interacting with them and then encouraging them follow back which is a lot of work which is something that we do on our work with me every single day I do it probably 400 times a day um but being able to have followers just coming out of nowhere because of reels that's awesome it's so amazing to feel that the reel I did yesterday got over 3k in two hours that's awesome you needed you need advice on reels or on instagram itself There is a, what is her name? That lady that we're all following for the Reels Challenge. I can't remember her name. I just always see her it's, stuff. In the world. I think it's like the Pink Sparrow or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Pink Sparrow. Follow, go on Instagram and search for Pink Sparrow. And she has literally every piece of information that you could ever need about making Reels on there. She just, I just saw one of her reels last night about like using the align feature on reels. And I had never, I didn't even know what that was. And I did it today and it turned out perfect. I made the coolest reel that I'm going to post tomorrow. And I cannot wait. I jacked it up by not having the filter on the last piece of the video, but whatever, nobody will notice. It'll be fine. So, I mean, that's all I had for you guys. So yes, she has amazing content. Definitely check her out. If nobody has any other questions or anything else they want to add, I think we're all done here. Thank you guys for hopping on. Love you. Love you. I'll see you later.